Hello and welcome to this stunning post-glacial landscape that we call the Lake District National Park. Welcome to the stunning Lake District in the northwest of the UK. The reason why we're here is in this series of episodes, we're going to look at the glacial past of the UK. And the Lake District is one of the areas in the UK which was shaped massively by glaciers. But before we look at the features that the glaciers form, let's have a look at what an actual glacier is. So let's have a look at the definition of what a glacier is. A glacier is a slow moving mass or river of ice formed by the accumulation and compaction of snow on mountains or near the poles. So in the Lake District, we're not near the poles, we're up in the mountains. So that's how the ice can form here. We're high up at high altitude, so snow can fall here. So in terms of what a glacier actually looks like, we've got a picture here. So we can see on this picture, we've got we're high up in the mountains, and we can see that snowfall has fallen on the mountains and has been compacted to form a huge river of ice, which is in the middle there, which is our glacier. Now that glaciers form at poles and in the mountains, there must be two different types of glacier. Let's have a look at these now. So our two different types of glacier are valley glaciers and continental glaciers. Now the valley glaciers are the glaciers that form up in the mountains. Our continental glaciers are ones that form at the North and South Pole. Let's have a look at the definitions of these two different types of glaciers. So our valley glacier is a glacier usually originated in a quarry at the valley head or at a plateau ice cap and flowing downwards between the walls of a valley. So in the Lake District, it would have formed high up in the mountains and then it would have flowed down the valley. So that would mean the glaciers that we had in the Lake District would have been valley glaciers. A continental glacier, however, are continuous masses of ice that are much larger than valley glaciers. Small continental glaciers are called ice fields and big continental glaciers are called ice sheets. So you only find these glaciers at the North and South Pole. They don't form anywhere else. However, our valley glaciers form high up in the mountains and they still form today. You can find them in the Alps, in the Rocky Mountains, in America, in the Andes in South America and the Himalayas in Central Asia. So we now know what a glacier is, but why exactly did they form in the UK, especially in this part of the UK, the northwest, in Cumbria and the Lake District? Let's have a look at that now. Research has indicated that the Earth's temperature does not stay state same. It changes. This graph here shows the Earth's temperature over the past 420,000 years. Now every 100,000 years or so, you get a spike in temperature. These periods we call interglacials, because the high temperatures mean there is not that many glaciers around the Earth. They're mainly concentrated at the North and South Pole and high up in the mountains, such as the Himalayas, the Alps, the Rocky Mountains. Now, the periods in between, where it's much cooler, where we have up to 8 degrees cooler than today's temperature, they would be our ice ages. Now, in these points, you would have glaciers much more prevalent around the Earth, even in the UK. So, in this time, you would have had glaciers in the Lake District. At this moment in time, we're in an interglacial, so we've got nice warm weather, there's not a lot of glaciers around. But in between, every 100,000 years or so, you would have much cooler temperatures and we'd have our ice ages. But what exactly is causing this to happen? It's not going to happen on its own. Something has to change for temperatures to decrease. Now, one change that can happen that causes ice ages is a change in the Earth's orbit. Now, the Earth's orbit isn't fully circular. 
it changes into an oval shape. Now this change happens every 100,000 years and this change is called eccentricity. Now when the Earth's orbit is more circular, we're in an interglacial, we're in a period where it's much warmer. This is because in the winter months, we're not that far away from the sun. So we still get a good amount of the sun's heat hitting us. This means that glaciers cannot form then, and we're not in an ice age. However, when the Earth's orbit is more oval, in the winter months, the Earth travels further away from the sun. This means there is a longer time for ice to build up and glaciers can start to build up in our mountains. These oval orbits lead to ice ages. These happen every 100,000 years. However, there are other things that can happen along with eccentricity that can impact global temperatures. Another one of these things is volcanic activity. When volcanoes erupt, they spit out lava and the gases and ash all up into the atmosphere. Now, when one volcano erupts, there's not that much being erupted into the atmosphere. But if lots of volcanoes erupt at the same time, or a super volcano erupts, the whole Earth can be engulfed in ash. When this happens, the sun's rays cannot penetrate this ash and they're reflected back out into space. So beneath, beneath the ash cloud, temperatures can drop rapidly. When this happens, it can lead to ice ages. A time when this happened was 66 million years ago, when some huge volcanoes erupted in India, in the Deccan province. And when this happened, so much ash was erupted into the atmosphere, that it blocked out the sun and dropped global temperatures by two degrees. This led to an ice age at that time. But along with volcanic activity, there was another reason that impacts global temperatures. And this is sunspots. Now on the sun, there is black spots that appear from time to time. These black spots are cooler areas of the sun. So whenever the sun has black spots on it, it's emitting less heat. So if the sun has more black spots on it, it means that less heat is being emitted, and that would mean less heat can reach the earth. If there is less heat from the sun reaching the earth, that could send us into an ice age, and it has happened in the past. Scientists have been investigating this over the past few years, and they've seen correlations between sunspot activity, which means more black spots on the sun, and global temperatures. Let's have a look at a graph here. So the blue line on this graph shows the amount of radiation, i.e. heat, being emitted from the sun. When there is high levels of heat being emitted from the sun, the temperatures of the earth, which is the red line, they increase. When there is less radiation, less heat being emitted by the sun, global temperatures decrease. At the end of our graph here, where global temperatures are increasing, even though there's lots of sunspots and little radiation being emitted, this is because of human activity causing global warming. The burning of fossil fuels causing greenhouse gases to be emitted, meaning the earth heats up and we have climate change. So if we ignore this last section of the graph, we can see there is a clear correlation between the amount of energy, radiation, being emitted by the sun and the Earth's temperatures. So if there's less radiation being emitted by the sun, global temperatures are going to decrease. And this is likely to have happened in the past, causing ice ages. So let's go back 10,000 years in the UK. Now we are in the middle of an ice age. Now this ice age is likely to have been caused by changing the Earth's orbit and sunspot activity. So at this time, the Earth's orbit is more oval, so we have longer winters, and these are much colder, and we have less radiation being emitted by the sun. So global temperatures have dropped, and we have ice ages. This means that more ice can come down 
from the North and the South Poles. So the ice from the North Pole reached as far south as Cardiff in the UK. So we can quite clearly see that the Lake District in the north of the UK was under this huge ice sheet. So that would mean that the whole of the Lake District was covered in glaciers. And these glaciers are those that changed the landscape to that what we see today. So we've just looked at why glaciers form within the UK, but how do they actually form? Now it needs to be in an ice age conditions, but they'd form high up in the mountains where we are now. So we're in a north facing hollow, and that's the start of our glaciers. North facing hollows allow for snow to build up in them. Then more and more layers will get built up and compacted into fern, which is glacier ice. We've got an example of that behind me, high up in the mountains, right at the top of Hell of Ellen. You can see a white blob. That is the build up of glacier ice. Now we're not in an ice age, so it can't get any bigger, but that's what would be the start of a glacier. Let's go and have a look at some diagrams now, which show this in a bit more detail. So at the start of our ice age, we would have had a mountain peak. Now this wouldn't have had any ice on it because we're just coming into the ice age. But this diagram here shows hollows in the mountain peak where ice could start to accumulate and our glacier could start to form. Now our hollows that are south facing, they get a lot of sunlight. So therefore, they can't have large accumulations of ice in them. Our north facing hollows are shaded from the sun's rays. So more ice can build up in these hollows and that is where our glaciers will start to form. So what happens when this ice starts to build up? So let's now have a look at a long profile of one of our glaciers. So here's our long profile of our hollow. So our hollow, when snow falls, it can accumulate and can be compacted into this ice called neve or fern. When it is thick enough, it starts to flow downhill, but it only flows within the hollow itself. It's not big enough to flow out of the hollow. There's a rock lip at the end, which is stopping this from happening. As more and more ice builds up on top of our uh, glacier, we then start to get ice over the top of the rock lip. When this is the case, our glacier can then start to flow downhill and it leaves the hollow and starts to carve out the valley below. So that's how our glaciers form, layers and layers of snow building up into ice and then the ice will start to move downhill in the form of a glacier. Now where I'm stood now is a quarry. Now this was formed by the glacier but how? It used to be like the small hollow right on the top of Helvellyn, just a small north facing hollow but now it's a huge indentation in the mountainside. We've got steep sides and a steep back wall. Now this formed due to the processes of erosion. We had abrasion and we have plucking that happened underneath the glacier. Let's have a look at these processes in a bit more detail. First of years ago when the glacier was forming, at the bottom of the glacier you had a variation in temperature. Due to the pressure of the building up of ice on top, this would force the, water, the ice at the bottom of the glacier to melt. The increased pressure would cause it to melt and cause a stream underneath. However, seasonally, the top of the glacier might melt a bit, so the pressure at the bottom of the glacier might decrease. When that pressure decreases, it allows the water at the bottom of the glacier to refreeze and attach itself back to the glacier. It's not just the water forming ice that joins back in the glacier. This water may freeze around some of the rocks, like these rocks that are scattered on the floor here. When it freezes around the rocks and then starts to move downhill under gravity, it would pick these rocks up with it and pluck them out of the ground. This is the erosional process of plucking and this happened at the base of our glacier. After the glacier had plucked the material out of the ground, it would stay in the glacier and you would have material like these rocks right on the bottom of the glacier. As the glacier is moving downhill, this material will scrape along the valley floor. As it scrapes along the valley floor, it will wear the valley floor down, making the valley deeper over thousands of years. This is the process of abrasion. It's like a sandpaper effect. 
glacier is like the sandpaper, the valley floor is like the wood. As the sandpaper goes over the wood, it would wear it down. The glacier going over the valley floor would eventually wear the valley floor down, making it deeper. So there are erosional processes of how our glaciers did shape the valleys around us here in the Lake District. Let's head back down to the main valley floor to get a summary of this episode. So there we have it, we've come to the end of our first episode. We've looked at what a glacier is. We've looked at why they form in the UK, especially in the northern parts of the UK. We looked at how they form up in the mountains up behind me. That's Helvellyn. That's where our glacier would have started with snowfall accumulating on the northern slope. Then our glacier would start to move downhill. And as they did that, they started to erode by abrasion and plucking. Next episode, we're going to concentrate on the erosion that glaciers come to do. We're going to start up in the mountains. We're going to look at arets, corries and pyramidal peaks and exactly how the glaciers form these features. Thank you very much for watching this episode and I'll see you next time.